Credo is the daft of the Football Daft podcast. Is that a good story? Is that a good story? I've got an encyclopedia brain. He's got a damn man nothing. <laughs> Fuck sake. Why are you a fucking hoo? <laughs> this is Football Daft. Sponsored by Glasgow Private Hire. Make booking easier. Download our booking app now on App Store and Google Play. You're a Rangers man. Uh, I'm a Hearts man. <laughs> With Ewan Cameron. I work for Showtime in ESPN. <laughs> and... Hey, the top end of Stevenson! It's the Football Daft Podcast with you and Grado, sponsored by Glasgow Private Hire. Hello there, Grado. How are you doing, mate? Now, right. what we're doing today, which is unusual for us, is that the start of the show involves a guest who's sat next to you. We're going to introduce the guest in just a second, but there's a reason why he's here. It's because he heard you put out a plea last week that you want football tops. And the reason you want football tops in this studio is why? Well, I want in this football daft studio, I want to make it into a nice kind of a man cave, a gaff where taps for all around the world can come. Millport Juniors, you want a tap? We'll put it up. <laughs> Fucking who else? Who? Partick Thistle. Partick Thistle. If you want us to put your tap on the display, get it up. Anywhere you want, any teams. Burnt any Island t- Shipyard. <laughs> if they've got a fucking team <laughs> Inverurie Locos Inverurie Locos There we go For any team <laughs> Stay <laughs> the bridge Thank you <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you own the Fitbit teams as well then I? Aye mate I'm, 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 I'm Nobody has a fucking like clue Who he is And you're chatting away he's him. a fucking Scottish Mike I don't know that. I was going to say Mike, Mike Ash <laughs> no, I was going to say Mike Ash I was going to say Mike Tyson <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let, let's introduce who I, is. Well, you introduce him because you know him better him. than me. So I know this guy. This guy, I've known this guy for 2002. I've known this guy for I was 15, 16 year old. Me and him both went to a, 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 a Jake the Snake Roberts <laughs> WWF superstar. <laughs> we went to a training seminar together, right? A training seminar? Uh, yep, yep. Both just went in an old bastards. fucking poster. Sad bastards. Well, look what it led to. I've gone. <laughs> We've done all right, right, and I'll never ever forget it. We got a lift for that for this post office in East Kilbride, where by the way, Jake the Snake was training as well, uh, slugging a bottle of Jack Daniels, a multi pack of Mars bars, <laughs> fucking showing us how to lock up. Basically, sitting there, steaming, telling the stories. And I always remember he told me, Melit Snake to Jake, <laughs> hey, Melit Snake to Jake. <laughs> Basically, Dallas told me, he says, mate. See, in the next couple of years, seeing 10 years' time, I'm going to start my own company, and it's going to be like ECW. For non-wrestling fans, ECW was like the underground wrestling company. It was like, there's WWF, ECW is like the kind of, the no limits, the hardcore, anything goes, there's swearing, there's blood, there's everything. And he said he was going to start up a Scottish version of that. I was only... Fuck, I actually remember that it was a dairy. Who is it? It's Mark Dallas! <laughs> <laughs> My God, Sorry. what do you do is name who well, it is? Well, I was getting right into it. I thought I was and who's it. Mark Dallas? He's the fucking promoter of a company that he said he, he would do. What's and it the has company? <laughs> Insane Championship Wrestling, ICW. ICW, the platform right. that follows it's about the It's a podcast. People For need to know who it is. He's so wide. No. And Mark Dallas for ICW. There Dallas, you go. Guys. ICW. Welcome, Mark <laughs> Dallas from ICW. You. Now, you're aware that we were looking for football tops. Yes. And we're looking for any football tops from any club in the country that we could put up in this little studio of ours and, f- and that we can also wear. And you got in contact with us via social media. And you says, look, I'm like, what are you, like a chief exec of a football club? I'm a, I've- by accident, I sort of kind of became the vice president of a junior football team. So <laughs> how, how, can, wait, how, how does one become accidentally the chief exec or in charge of a football club? Right, well, so what, what happened was um, I was at a birthday party that was in Maryhill. It's Maryhill Juniors, Maryhill FC. And um, the, the the pub kind of leads onto the pitch. Right. So my son's there and he's gone out. To, well, I'm having a pint. He's about playing on the pitch. And I went, oh, this is, this is nice. I grew up around here. It's... ICW started Maryhill, it's the same company colours. And I went, how much do they sponsor you? They went, oh, just buy us our hame strips. We've no hame strips. Like, they would wear, like, all oh, different strips for different years. We're like, what's <laughs> what? different sponsors? So there would be a 1 to 11 squad wearing completely different tabs. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> they all wear the same. So they'd have, like, a strip for a year ago, a strip for two years ago, a strip for three years ago, and, like, randomly, every game would be a different one. So it'd be like, oh, really? I all these sponsors didn't pay the money anymore and stuff. So I was like, 
all right, cool. But then I went, I'll, I'll buy you some football strips. That'd be cool. I thought it'd just be a nice thing to have in my office. Uh, say we aye. sponsored Mary Hill because that's where I grew up. And it used to be quite a big junior team. They were massive. Well, I remember at that the, point. the Buffs used to go. And, I used to go and watch them play the Buffs. So they had a good team. They had um, uh, John McLaren play for them. That was Andy McLaren's brother. Oh, I right, remember him. Aye, aye. He was a player back in the day, and he played with Mary Hill. So there's, it's got quite a we back in the day, man. Junior, junior team, at tip fifteen years ago, man. They done well. Aye, 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 they won everything. Like so, so you're having this, um, what you would describe as an informal conversation. I'll buy you strips, I, and it leads to what? I went, I went into um, go like that, right? So, how, how do I go about buying these strips? Where do I buy them for? That sort of stuff. How many strips do you need? Just getting mm-hmm. all the information. I like there might not even be a team next year. And I'm like, what do you mean? And it was uh, early years. The sort of the guy that that was a uh, bankrolling it and taking care of it had passed away, and then his son had passed away, and all these different things happened. And members had left the committee, and it dwindled and dwindled. And it was things like the when they promote games, they didn't have a website. They'd, it was basically like at Jurassic FC, in a way, right? <laughs> so there's people there who had a lot of heart and really wanted to turn around, but they couldn't seem to... And I went, wanted to bring in wee promotion techniques that I'd learned for being a promoter all these years. So I was like, look, if you just do this and this and this, you know what, I'll come into one of your committee means and I'll help you. And I was like, do you know what, I'll, I'll stay for a wee bit. <laughs> and then I went away to Stirling with my missus for the night, got steaming, and you know that way he's, you get drunk and you wake up the next day and go, oh, what have I done or said? I woke up and went, Helen, am I the vice president now? Because <laughs> <laughs> they phoned me at like 11 at night. I've had like a free course meal. I've been drinking all night in this fancy bar. I'm like, I'm feeling good about myself, feeling like a businessman and all that. And then they're just like, do you want to be the vice president? I'm like, ah, of course, I'd be honoured to be the vice president. And I woke up the next day and went, fuck, I'm the vice president. So now you're the Mary Hill <laughs> FC vice president yeah. and you've bought the strips as well. But I'll, I'll, I'll because love it. I saw the report on STV. They, did, they, they came and actually did a report on it because it's such a really interesting story and in how you've fallen into Go it. Going in some national newspapers or that sort Aye. of thing. So it's like I'm, I'm being used to bring mere eyes on it so um, I care about the brand I mean, but it does kind of feel like playing a real life version of champ manager like the <laughs> other day I bet you it's brilliant man right so the other day was like so it's like Hingsmill used to play like premier manager and all that and you'd yeah. like make the stadium so all it's right. like we're making the stadium better and I can all see right. it all happening in front of me all like this is dynamite and then the other day it was like the team wasn't in a position ever in the past couple of years to like pay for players and then I was like I think we need to go and take someone out of the bank that we've made now and give him the manager so he can buy some players. And that happened last week. And I was in the, the manager's room saying, I was like, you know what, mate? I still had a pint. Like, I can't help but no be unprofessional all the time. Do you know what right. I mean? I was like, but we're going to give you a bit of money and this and that. And um, I just like, walked out there going, well, I feel like a heavy. Football director, man. Wheeling and dealing, go and buy him, here's your budget. Do you, do you know what was amazing? Um, Dallas asked me to play in a charity game. It was like a Mary Hill Legends game against ICW wrestlers uh-huh. and, a, a, and, a, and a pitch um, at Mary Hill's ground. And I thought, that's so far off Latin Sons. I went, there'll be nobody there. And so, usual, I turned up when. Are <laughs> you me? Right, so <laughs> I'd been do- I'd been down in Plymouth uh, doing some work for an art company, uh, a wrestling company, and I, I drove up through the night. I got there at five to two, and the game started at two, and I still got there before Grado. <laughs> 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 I made it for I made it I made it for half time I um, literally go to a motor and ran in and I'd already missed the 40 at everybody <laughs> on the pitch mm-hmm. so how many did you think would turn up I seriously in my heart of hearts was thinking we'd maybe get about 60 to 80 people how many and that's been truth there was about 500 folk there uh, oh four, wow four, 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 you in for a junior game, and it was brilliant because it was all families that have never really been exposed to junior football before. It was great advertisement for the season coming up. I'm telling you, this season it is for Mary Hill. There's going to be it's going to be packed. Well, what, what, what's already happened is so. Say last season, it was like you get 40, 50 a game. I went to the game on Saturday there. And uh, we go to bet, because that's but obviously on the pitch that's gotta take longer to get that all. Oh sack the ball! <laughs> sack the ball! <laughs> Dallas out! Dallas <laughs> out! But the crowd was like Where's your money, you tight <laughs> bastard? <laughs> the, the we was, want to know <laughs> <laughs> The crowd is like 100, 120 people, so like that's still good for a junior Aye. game, mate. But this is the thing. This is just a, a, a run of the mill game. This isn't like a cup game. And also in uh, September first, we've got another sort of game to raise the profile of the club. And but you do remember that's the same day as Old Firm. That's only one. Well, that's, that's, that's okay. how it's kicking off at half two ah, because it's after right, it. Right, right, right. Good so yeah, I'm, good. I'm not well, feeling. See, that's good, but because there's people spilling out the boozer. 
and they'll come into the game. Hunters of boozers run yep. very hill yeah, right yeah, next yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. Even the boozer that's attached to the stadium Aye. will be shown the game. game. Yeah, that's and cracking. then everybody comes round, half two kick off, and it's uh, Mary Hill versus uh, Party Thistle Legends. It's going oh, to be like uh, Jerry Britton, Chick Charlie, or that. It'll oh, be a fantastic brilliant. day. That's been selling really well. And the well reason well. that you're here today is not only to tell the story of how you are now basically the Mike Ashley of Mary Hill Football Club. Don't call me that, man. <laughs> but you, you, <laughs> but you have, you, you've brought the strips, and you've brought us a strip each. Excellent. Go, so right. this will be the first ever strip that's been allowed, and even better, it's a lot closer to my heart. Obviously, everybody knows I'm an ICW wrestler. Go, Dallas right. is the ICW. A good looking strip, by uh, the way. Why, why did you choose that? Because it's I went like, if I'm menacing. If I'm paying to sponsor the team, I'm picking with the strips are. So right. I went and picked the strips in a wee, wee Kappa number. It's so nice, actually. The red and black is really good, huh? Eh? Red, black, and white is ICW's colours. It's Mary Hill colours. We started Mary Hill. Uh, is that, is a, that is a tidy t shirt. And also, how good exposure is it for ICW as well? Brilliant. That is. Are you happy with it, uh, Mark? Aye, it's getting back to the, the local community in a way. Correct. And, you know, that. Correct. and then they're doing things like. Brahead clan, like we've got a sponsor board there and we're sponsoring like their enforcer and so it's like then uh, ICW then getting back to Scottish mm-hmm. sport. Are you, are, you, are you excited, Mark? I mean, this. I mean, it's I very exciting. It's everyone's dream to be a football manager. That's why we love Champ Man. We played it as kids. Oh, can I be vice chairman? What can I do? I'm the vice president. Oh, you can right. be the junior what vice I, president. What can I be? Give me something. <laughs> what do you want a role? No, that deals with money. Fuck that. Tell you, you actually need to do work if you're aye, aye. Well, what, What's a job title that you can give me? So I'll find one for you, mate. mate. I will do it, right? Me, mate, because I, it's just a, I think you get publicity for the club. Are you excited about that? 100%, mate. I am involved, well, because I'm ICW, to be involved with something that's brand new. We've also got a skybox at the stadium. So uh, well, but mate, what I'm, what I'm, see, we have. Well, listen, we have. You, uh, it's the same bar. You, looks onto the pitch. You and what I'm talking about is Wait. you know we want to take this road, this road in the show, this show in the road. Aye. Somewhere like Mary Hill Junior would be good here, to come. Yeah. By the way, that's what I'm saying there. So there's a there's an upstairs bar that looks onto the pitch that is a skybox. When the guy said. We've got a skybox that you can use. I've thought I've already got a telebox, mate. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the guy actually meant because you're at a junior football ground. You're like, what do you mean you've got a skybox? You know what I mean? But this I've got is skybox. But it seats 15. It's got its own bar. Maybe one of the days there's a game like that, you can come down, do your podcast now, have That's a cut not of... a bad shout, the actually. The seats on the side, have guests, yeah. able guests, even just like yeah. uh, studio audience. And we could um, announce it and get people to come down and watch the game and then watch the podcast and then get some special guests down to the, the, the pitch. That's a good idea. Yeah, Let's do perfect. it. Perfect. Loving it. Yeah. Promoter brain's gone wild here. Yeah. Listen, no, anytime. He does know what he's doing. Right. Anytime. Uh, Mark Dallas, um, Vice President of Mary Hill FC. Thank you owner so much. Owner of the Championship Wrestling. Aye. And owner of... Well, we got there eventually, thanks to you, <laughs> Uh, that was a long and boring intro, eh? It was a long and boring intro. You went all the place, man. You were all over the place. How was that? You were well. Listen I was back to, to it. it. You're trying to be respectful. I get that, and I really, really appreciate that. But you're doing. Say, you're saying too much, and people got bored and just lost track of what you're saying. Edit that then? No, we'll no edit it done. <laughs> we'll no edit it done. We're keeping it you. Uh, Mark Dallas. Are you okay? I wish you were my co-host on this fucking <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Why did? <laughs> when you quit. <laughs> uh, I've had enough. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, Mark Dallas, owner of ICW, aye. vice president of Mary Hill FC, has brought us in our first official strips to the Football Daft podcast. We love you, my man. Love you too. Uh, best of luck with the season. Yep. Best of luck with ICW. Cheers, my man. Thank aye. you very much. And don't get the sack. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them up. And, and for, how's, because I know this is. Oh my God, I said Cheerio, and you're carrying on again. <laughs> Gradles rant. It's the Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado, and I'm looking forward to this today. Grado's rant, although I've got no idea what it's about, but I'm curious to know... Oh, you're involved. Sorry? You're involved in it. I'm involved in your rant. Aye. Well, there's only a couple of things I can think of that would involve me, because I've only seen you twice since we did the last podcast. One was... We went to the Rangers game in hospitality for the European game. Uh, Don't be laughing, producer uh, John. It was a good night. It was a good night. It was hospitality. We're invited by the sponsors of the show, Glasgow uh, Private Hire. Thank you, we, again, ha- we, we have to. Steve. We have to. We have to be there for the the, the clients. Aye, we are the kind of. We're their bitches. <laughs> if, if they I'll, say. I'll fucking be their bitches all day long, mate. <laughs> 
So um, I was with you for the uh, the Rangers game in hospitality with Glasgow Private Hire when the Rangers beat Mitchell in 3-1. Right. And the other time that I was with you this week was when we went to see Duncan James from Blue. So I'm curious to know why well, that's, I am part that of your is, rant. That's part of it. That's part of it. So what do you mean? So well, you will add to me, um, like, well, after this show, I'm going to be recording Duncan for Blue. I thought fucking tied to get in there. Brilliant. So I was like, oh, I'm going to come with us. That was last week. Aye, aye. Uh-huh. King's feet are, so we get in the motor and uh, for a start, I thought Duncan Fibbler was the guy with the, the blonde hair that was in Big Brown and all that. The women eyes, I'm like, ah, tidy. Lee Ryan. Lee Ryan. I thought it was Lee Ryan, right? So I'm like, yes. One for the money. And the, <laughs> D, that mean you and the mole. Like, ah, right. fucking get Yeah, we're going to see Duncan. Da, da, da. I sat down there going, I wonder what he's looked like. So I put his name in the go. I'm like, fuck, that's the wrong blue man. That's the wrong blue. I thought it was the guy Lee. So I bit gutted at that. That's not my rant. So we're in the motor, we're singing John for the money and the free lies and da 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 da. Come on, all rise, all rise. Sitting there having a great time. I rest my case. Loving it. We met Duncan. Uh, when we seen Duncan, <laughs> it's fucking. It's going to look at the road with our own as soon as we're in, couldn't it? Oh, what? What is this video, audio? How long have we got? <laughs> yeah, I'm tired, I'm tired. Of, who's this? Who's he fucking like? Yeah, so who is this guy? Because basically, I'm already, I'm just there to get that wee video right to put on Twitter. So you and Stanny's job and all that. And he <laughs> does well with what he does, Stanny's stuff, Stanny's interview. Where's this right. rant going? You, well, hold on. You, 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 I mean, you get paid off Clyde today. I'll pop in and ask the number one question. Big man, how do you make your macaroni? <laughs> what? <laughs> How do you make your big macaroni? <laughs> oh, usually I do it with this. I mean, you, you use a roux. Well, I'll tell you what, tell you what today. What you do is you bow your pasta, strain it, put it in a microwave with a jug, put it with double cream, put in a bit of cheddar, put it in a microwave for three minutes. Bam, take it out, put it under the oven for a good five minutes. You've got a nice crispy top. Macaroni, absolute champion. So is your rant about Duncan? No, the, the rant is, the rant, so, is, so Duncan, the rant is we then go for something to eat at Tyrific, which, how good was Tyrific? Well, I'd never heard of Tyrific. And, and, I'm, and, and, and I'm quite picky when it comes to restaurants. Aye. And you went, Tyrific, trust me on this, I kid you not, it's one of the best... Thai red curries I've ever oh, had. It was fucking tremendous. It was man. tremendous. So, it we, was, we, we, so right, we, Duncan right. was great. We didn't, had a good Duncan. didn't even charge us for the prawn crackers. No, they didn't. I they hate not. that. <laughs> that could have been one of the rants. That's not the rant. But someone who can put on two pound fifty for the prawn crackers, <laughs> they see me coming. See free. See if I don't get my free prawn crackers. Gaff my nut. Well, Tyrific gave us a free Tyrific prawn cracker. Gave us yeah. So um, where's your rant the, going? The time after this as well. We go to the Rangers game. Everything's brilliant. Everything's fantastic. And I went, you and you know what. I think you're one of my best mates. Oh, right. Yes, you did say that to me in the car. You said to me, you, p- you put the radio down, you went, you and I think you're one you're of my, my best, best mates. mates. And I know you've got a lot of friends, so what's the problem? You fucking said nothing. You, and does that, that's you upset you. You never, you never, well, you you never said thanks, you never said, oh, you went a mean too. You just, you just looked at me as if I was fucking stupid. <laughs> but what, what? That was embarrassing. Right. Like, well, why didn't you say something? That was about embarrassing, mate. I'm, t- I'm trying. You know, all these folk that I hang about with, I spend more time with you than I do with my bud, when I do with my father, my, my own real pals. You know what? Your and I turned around and I went, You and me, you are one of my best mates. But what did. What? Yeah, but Fucking tumbleweed. Well, why didn't you, you say. You made me feel like a moron. But, wh- but would you, would you, would you, would you, what would did, you? What did, Imagine somebody like me telling me you were a best pal. You'd be fucking like that. Grado was telling me he's your best mate. You just looked at me as if I'd do it. See you! But what did you expect me to say to you? Turn around and say, thanks my man, I've had a good week. You're up there and all. You're up there and all. You're up there with one of them and all. But no, silence. It made me feel like a right fanny. So what? See you! See your friendship! Stick it up your hole! <laughs> the will be me and terrific. We'll be named here Duncan for Blue. That shall last. And see the next time I get invited to the hospitality, they'll be getting tell. That cunt's no coming. <laughs>
Aye. The beef the was good. Cheese boards, can I be a cheese board? But you oh, did oh, enjoy oh, your oh, cheese boards. Oh, I, I, I like my blue cheese. I like my goat's cheese, mm-hmm. cheddar cheese, and your crackers, sort of cheese crackers. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, and it would be fair to say, um, Grado, um, thanks to Glasgow Private Hire for inviting us this along. This wouldn't have happened. But you got pissed <laughs> because I had to drop you at a train station. What? True or oh, not? Sorry, that, that, Did you forget that? That's oh, what good I, friends do. I, 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 That's what I, friends do okay, for other I, friends. Okay. So I don't need to say to you that you're one of my best pals because you know why I don't need to do that is because what best pals do, they don't brag about you're one of my best pals. You do things. So what did I do for you? Oh, you dropped me off at the... We left Ibrox. I carried you to my car. Mm-hmm. I put you into my car. Care at me? I don't think you care at me. <laughs> well, you were, you were, I was holding you up. Right, right, okay. I bundled you into my car. You and bundled. I, I dropped you <laughs> off at Central Station right. and you got the train and you got here well, safe and sound. Via the Blue Lagoon for a you hamburger supper. You never did. Uh, via never did. Via Mate, fucking Blue Lagoon. Wait, wait, wait. Just two hours <laughs> previously, you had a four course meal at hospitality. <laughs> I, you, see, once I got a drink, mate, I can't stop eating. <laughs> Honestly. Clearly. I swear to God, I can't. See, once I got a drink, mate. I was at a 21st once and they, they, they ordered in a Chinese buffet as the buffet. Uh-huh. And I swear to God, I was at steaming. I must have went through 36 chicken balls. <laughs> see the next morning, see my white tape was all chicken balls. <laughs> Anyway, what are we doing here? Football daft. Uh, we're talking about Glasgow Private Hire. So, guys, thank you so much for the invite to Rangers Hospitality for that European game. And, Grado, because your impressions are working so well, and Glasgow Private Hire love that you did Ian Crocker the week before, you've done impressions of me when giving out the information for Glasgow Private Hire. Um, I would like you now to give out the telephone number and the app details in the style of so- Gordon Ramsay. Can you do Gordon <sighs> Ramsay? I've tried that before because where's he always? He goes, that's raw. Right, let me try okay. it. Okay, <clears throat> you're Gordon Ramsay. Right, right. You're inner Gordon Ramsay. Okay, let's do it. Okay, <laughs> Glasgow Private Hire is available. Zero one four one seven seven four three thousand. Mate, they, mate, they, mate, mate, that's Ian Crocker. <laughs> right, that's Ian Crocker again. <laughs> <laughs> Go and, do, go, 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 go and do my voice. Download the app. Oh, fuck. I don't. What's my voice? Do What's my voice? Let's go to the toilet. Let's go to the toilet. <laughs> Van Winkle. <laughs> Thanks for coming to Van Winkle, guys. Right, that's, okay. Okay. That's, that's okay. Right. Right. So, so back to Gordon Ramsay. Zero, one, four, one, seven, seven, four, three thousand. I just fucking eat Crocker again, isn't it? <laughs> Pass that. No, I don't I need to work on that. Oh, I can do is Ian Crocker. And I'm doing it again next week for the preview for the old fan, right? I'll do it then. Yeah, that's good. Until then, I can't. <laughs> that's definitely nothing like Gordon Ramsay, is it? Try again, let me right, hear. Well I do the app details in Gordon Ramsay. Download! Try again! <laughs> Download the app from the App Store and Google Play. That's raw! No, it's still Ian Crocker. That's Pish. Either way, 0141774 Download that from the App Store and Google Play because fuck, apparently, all the impressions I can do are Ian Crocker. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even that good. It's the Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado, sponsored by Glasgow Private Hire. League Cup games last weekend. Quick run through those games. Celtic 2, Dunfermline 1. After extra, extra time. time. There are problems at Celtic. Oh, well, when they say there was problems, it was just... No, there's something no right there. When you look at what happened against Cluj, apparently the centre-half, Julian, £7 million pounds he paid from. He's not looking great. Really? He's a bit of a bomb scare, they're saying. <laughs> uh, so they needed extra time to beat Dunfermline, who equalised uh, late you know on in that game. I can, I can assure you, you know, I bet he's phenomenal the 1st of September. <laughs> I bet you, I just know it When he plays your lot Aye, aye, I bet he is I bet he'll fucking come on to a game then uh, So <laughs> Celtic are through But only just uh, 2-1 against Dunfermline uh, East 5-0, Rangers 3 Did you see the game? I did see the game But and? I, I would, must admit The conditions had a big part to play in it It was so windy, mate Yeah I felt sorry for the players That had to make an impression Because obviously It was a change side It was a chance for players To sh- to show mm-hmm. to show Stevie what he could do To try and break into first team I'm not sure that some of the team Some 
of the players that they played made that big an impression. But again, is there no one that stood out that would break in that starting uh, eleven? I'm telling you, I think maybe Doherty needs to go back out and loan again. Bobby Helland or your three million signing? Uh, right now, my my my, my centre back pairing right now is Kakic and Goldson. Kakic and Goldson. Ed, Edmondson, no, no, anywhere near uh, it either. I'm, I'm st- I say it's too early to say, and even with the guys that come on, uh, what do you call them, Barker and who's the other boy that we signed, Barker and who did we sign up? You're the Rangers fan, not me. Yeah, I know, but he's up my house. <laughs> who the fuck did he sign? Who did he play again? You, did, you clearly didn't make an impression. <laughs> do you not make an impact? I, but who was who's who's the boy for King Andy King? Oh, Andy King, did I, he I, come I, on? Ah, he come on, he come All on. Right. I look no bad, look no bad. Um, what was I going to say? Jermaine Defoe. Just, just shows you. I mean, fucking looking great, looking great. Young, 36? young, upcoming fucking <laughs> goal scorer. <laughs> looking forward to the season we've got with him. Uh, Are you happy with your squad? Happy that we've got. Uh, we spoke to Mark Allen last week, and again, but he sent a, and Steve, he's saying the same, the same as what Stephen Gerrard saying. He's wanting two players for every position. Yeah. I still think we need another left back because there again the last two games Baric has been nowhere to be seen Halliday okay uh, Flanders is no Flanders <laughs> <laughs> Ned Flanders <laughs> John Flanagan I'm saying I was going to say Flanders Flanagan <laughs> it's unfair playing him in that side yeah because he kind of gets sprinting down that left on side he's need to turn that into the right and yeah you know what I mean so yeah. I think yeah right. uh, come on I quan Hamilton nil your thoughts my thoughts on that is <laughs> I said it was going to be 4-0 <laughs> <laughs> Went to extra time uh, as well. Again, I know. Happy for the man, Gordon Souls. Yes, Gordon will be celebrating. He'll be happy yeah. with that. And it's a result that Alessio needed, this, needed the Kilmarnock man. manager because already the pressure is building. Go on, take time. And the pressure is building again on Brian Rice. Yes. And um, we've got Dundee 1, Aberdeen 2 again. Aberdeen scraping through with the skin of their teeth. Uh, Equaliser for Aberdeen in the last minute of injury time to take it to extra time and then winning it 2-1 after extra time. Uh, Sam Cosgrove, who is becoming indispensable for them. I mean, he's so important to them just now. Yeah. Um, but there's issues there. They lose to St Mirren the week before. They get pumped to Europe. They're struggling against Dundee. I mean, Again, as I've said, Derek McInnes, know your place. <laughs> and it's proven my point. I will give it, I, I'd still get another wee time yet. I said Aberdeen for third. I'm not sure that's the case now. No. Uh, Hibs five, Morton three. What a performance from Morton. 3-3, three, three, taking Hibs to extra time. Oh, and and then losing by five goals to three. Ah, but uh, well done, Morton. Well done. Putting up a good show there at the yeah. Premiership Club. Uh, Partick Thistle three, Ross County two after extra time. Did Muller get a goal? Uh, Miller did get a goal, yeah. Uh, Partick Thistle, good result for them in the Championship, up against the Premiership's Ross County. Um, the young lad, Penrice, who I'm uh, friends with his mum, Teresa, um, <laughs> scored a cracking free kick. <laughs> I'm past his <laughs> mum. <laughs> I am T. Penrice. Oh, for fuck me, man. Do you want me to bring that is in? scraping the barrel there. <laughs> <laughs> who, who's, your, who's your pal? Who would you say? Do you want me to show you a picture? No, I'll show you. I'll show you a picture. Right. So um, James Penrice <laughs> is a fullback. Did you imagine you heard that in BBC? James Penrice from Pillsbury's. He's more <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, so James Penrice is a fullback, and uh, that's his mum. Holy fuck! <laughs> 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 oh my god, it she she looks she's gone to the ball at Titanic, <laughs> didn't she? Came in when Jack Dawson comes up for third class and sits for the hoity toity ones. <laughs> she's a oh, no bad man, but I don't know if it can we say if the women are nice on the radio these days. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to invite her in? Aye, why no? Guess who. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So great result for Partick Thistle uh, four far one Livingston two uh, big result that for Livingston and uh, the other game um, was Hearts beating Motherwell away from home by two goals to one. I was a Friday night. That was a Friday night game. Um, a big result for Craig Levine. A result that Craig Levine needed. A result that Hearts needed. And hopefully that might just be the game that um, kicks Hearts on. Do you know think Hearts still need another couple of players? Yes, we do. We're struggling. We don't have any creativity. But I actually thought we we're going to lose away to Motherwell. 
Motherwell. But great result. We're into the quarterfinals and we've got Aberdeen at home. Derek McInnes, watch out. Know your place. <laughs> <laughs> Take your company time, Castle. I'd and love to get Derek McInnes on this. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Hey, well, it? mate. Do you think he'd come on and speak to I me? I am Palsy's more. <laughs> It's the Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado, and our guest today is currently working as business manager for Falkirk after having two stints there as manager. He took the Bears to the Scottish Cup final in 1997 and took St. Johnson from Division 2 to the Premier League in three seasons as well as winning Manager of the Year in 1991. He was also Jock Wallace's assistant at Rangers where he won two League Cups. We're delighted to have with us on FaceTime from his car in Falkirk because the lazy get couldn't be bothered driving mm-hmm. through the street. Studio. It's the one and only Alex right, Totten. How you doing? How you doing, Alex? Great to see you. A good build up. Thank you very much. And, but I tell you what, that's me only just scraping the surface of your career. What a career you've had, Alex. Yeah, it's been very exciting when you think about it. I mean, I played with Scottish Fuel Boys when I was 15 and uh, we won the Victory Shield, beat England, Ireland, and Wales, and obviously a few clubs interested. I went down to my United, my parents, and uh, met Bobby Charlton. They wanted to sign me. I went to Birmingham and Middlesbrough, Arsenal. And Liverpool, and eventually I signed with Liverpool purely but simply because they built Shankly, who was a tremendous man. They're actually in the second division, and Ian St. John signed in the June, I signed in the July, and Big Ronnie signed in August, and that next season they got promotion and never looked back, obviously, but it was a tremendous experience. They must have been they must have been great times. You obviously had a great uh, playing career, but what I know you mostly from is your, your time in management. I think it's great. Um, you worked under Jock Wallace at Ibrooks. What kind of guy was he like to work under? Jock was tremendous. He really was because he phoned me in the, the Friday morning. He said, "I'll let you come as my assistant son, and I'm going to Aberdeen tomorrow." He said, "I'll phone you Monday." And uh, but we played Clyde on the Saturday. Craig Brown was manager of Clyde and. Our chairman said, I want to see you a minute. So that's a motherwell chairman. They want to speak to you. So I went through the Coat Bridge Hotel on the Monday night, and Mr. Livingston was the chairman. Alec, we've had so many managers at Motherwell between Jock Wallace leaving, Davy Hay, Roger Hind, Alan McLeod, Ian St. John, want continuity. I want to offer you a five year contract. And uh, I phoned him on the Wednesday, thanked him most sincerely, turned it down, and to beat Rangers for four o'clock on the Friday. And uh, it was great, met Big Jock, and come on, son, you're now a Ranger. We'll meet the directors. And his chairman Wally Waddle, and it was really, really great, great experience. But Jock was tremendous. You know, yeah. he was great with me. He says, when I step up, general manager, you take over as team manager, and uh, that was in the paper about six months later as well. So it was uh, that was the idea. He says, you were at Liverpool, we're about a continuity. I want continuity here, and uh, but it was great. Uh, he said, I've never lived at Rangers to beat Celtic in a cup final, which we did when McCoy's got a hat trick. to beat Celtic three two. We beat them United in a way a world tour. Away to Australia, New Zealand, America, and Canada. So obviously it was, uh, it was a bit special, very special, and uh, it was a great club. And Jock was tremendous to, to me. He really was. I learned a lot from him. You know, he was uh, he was a good manager. He knew the game, and it is, but the boys really, really fit. So, so is it true to say then, Alex, that um, it was basically you lined up to take over Jock Wallace, and it ended up being Sunus? Was it, were you meant to be the next that's guy? That's right. That was the idea. Jock says you want continuity here. He said, you can learn from me, and uh, uh, you took over as team manager. And John Payton was the chairman. He said that, and I think it was Sunday Express, about six months later, Jock Wallace steps up as general manager. Alec Totten takes over as the team manager. And that was initial plans, but then soon as come, of course, uh, we all got the sack, you know. Because when it. I was at Rangers, all the boys were in the same basic, you know, £300 a week, 15 grand a year. And when soon as come, it was every man for himself. Almost his first two signing was Butcher and Woods, and Aye. it just changed. I mean, I think Big Jock spent about six hundred thousand pound in the time I was there. Where soon as spent sixty million, <laughs> it just changed <laughs> overnight. And Jeez. probably Scottish football benefited because of that. He brought a lot of good players from England, and they were quite a force without a doubt. So. I enjoyed my time at Ibrox. It was great. It was Alex, great. Can, I'm, Alex, I'm going to interrupt you there because you're talking about how wonderful it was at Rangers, but Graeme soon as took your job. Are you not pissed off? Uh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's safe to say, but uh, um, Ali, you went on to, well, you went on to St. Johnson. You took them for the, the second division to the, the, the Premier League in three seasons. You were awarded manager of the year in 1991. Um, but it says, uh, read a wee story here, you, you, you get uh, let off for asking for too much money at the chairman. 
Ah, well, I felt I'd done really well, to be honest with you. And, that's uh, a good, that's a, that's a good run. One defeat in eight games. And, uh, and the chairman came in and uh, he just, I knew there was something wrong in that and could hardly speak in that. So I just feel we need a change. I came uh, home that day and Chick Young was at the front door with the BBC. The papers were there. My phone never stopped for about three days and um, letters from all over Scotland. And was, everybody was really... Can I, I remember that? Andy Roxburgh and Craig Brown. Randy Falkert and Craig at Dundee, the company see me, they're both with Scotland, so they're like, you're here for life, the job you've done at St Johnson. And all the letters in the Persia advertiser, the one guy put, what they got in common, John Lennon, John F. Kennedy, Alec Tone, always remember where I was when I heard the tragic news, that was one of the letters in the, in the Persia advertiser, but these things happen. Obviously, um, Rangers, I was expecting this, I didn't really know sooner, whereas St Johnson was a big, big surprise, without a doubt, and the fans were really tremendous to me up there, you know. And Stuart Cosgrove, he had a dinner for me. He said, never had a dinner for Wally Ormond, Alec, going to have one for you. And I got lots of presents for the, the St. Johnson fans and that. So it was great. I mean, uh, I had a great time at St. Johnson, no doubt about that. We, we won the First Division Championship. An open top boss round Perth. Like, won the European Cup. There were thousands there. So uh, it was a special time for me. I mean, I had six senior clubs, but the most enjoyable as a manager, was obviously St. Johnson. The most enjoyable as a player was Don Fairman because obviously we were really successful there at Don Fairman. won the Scottish Cup and I was only 21 when I went to America to try and promote football with Man City. They'd won the league. Uh, Franny Lee, Mike Summerby, Joe Mercer was manager from New York to Los Angeles, Vancouver, Toronto and Canada. So I've been quite fortunate really. Aye. I've seen a part of the world because of football. Alec, you obviously said yourself there that you didn't know Graham Soonis too well. But when it comes to Walter Smith, apparently he's had a bit of a Barney at one point. <laughs> a proper <laughs> square goal. A proper eye. He's well, the Barney, it's a Barney, it's in Johnson because they were playing Rangers that day and there are a few verbals passing to dug out, to dug out really, you know. Mm. And we're shoulder to shoulder and we're left to dug out and that, but nothing really happened. But Are you uh, sure? The, the police commissioner, he wanted to make a name for it. No interest in football, made a name for himself. So right. what he made got lifted and... and uh, <laughs> I went to a, a director's house. We'll go back down. There'll nobody there. We came back down. The television cameras were there. The photographers and everything. So they made the meal a bit right enough. So you did, know, you, so. did you do a man? <laughs> what do you mean? Did, did, you, did you give him a doing? Every, every year I got a Christmas card for Watty and Ethel. Aye. I've always been great friends. And I brought a book out. Uh, Thoughts from the cop to the Kelpies. And what he did in the acknowledgement along with Alec Ferguson. Oh, that's perfect. Really, really great. Aye, that is good. So if, that, if you two were to get in a boxing ring though, who would have won it, Alex? Oh, Alec taught without a doubt. <laughs> <What? laughs> Alright then, here we go. Alex, you see yourself as a bit of a hard man, aye? Not really, no. No, no not at all. I'm not a hard man, no. <laughs> um, what would you say was the highlight of your career, Alex? When you look back on it, it's a long, distinguished career. What was the moment for you? The moment for me was walking my team out Falkirk in the cup final in 1997. 97. Because... Uh, I took Kevin McAllister in and I said, you know, I was thinking of wearing a kilt. Oh, Gaffer, that'd be great. The fans would love it. Aye, that's and, uh, right. And Jock Brown says, I'll, I'll give you a good mention coming out of the tunnel. And he did. Because he says, uh, Alec Totten resplendent in the folk at Tartan. And Andy Gray, the black lad, you know, he, he saw me and said, oh, Gaffer, you're looking a million dollars. And I felt, felt very proud that day that's to walk cool. into the cup final with a kilt on. And uh, the folk at fans, I mean, there were 22,000 folk at fans here. And uh, I remember one headline the Monday that says, one winner, no losers. It was great being there because they beat Celtic over two games in Glasgow in the semi-final. But uh, losing the final, you go for one thing to bring the cup back, and we didn't. But I say it was it was a great occasion, certainly. Do you think you should have won the final, Alex? I think so. I think we scored a goal. And I think it was proved by television. It was uh, it was not offside. Sandy Roy. I never send Sandy a Christmas card. No, I don't send him one. <laughs> and I've got one of our producers that's sitting right next to us, John. He is a mega bairn. He's a big Falkirk fan. He definitely agrees with you. He believes that that fateful day in 1997, it should have been a Falkirk bus, open top bus, run about uh, Falkirk that day. No doing the Nelsha. Well, well, the thing is, I mean, I went to the cup final in 1957 when I won it. I was only 11. And uh, went to all the Falkirk games then, and it was brilliant. They won it in '57, so we thought we were going to emulate that in 1997 because it was Kilmarnock again, but it wasn't to be. But I think if we'd have scored that goal with Neil Oliver, I think we'd have won it because Bobby took the two strikers who I signed off, Jim McIntyre and Paul Wright, and uh, they it was all Falkirk players, then, so it was a shame. But uh, they were they great players. Happen, well, you get breaks sometimes. Alex, see when um, you look back at all the players that you managed and that you worked with. Best player, in your opinion, most talented, 
player that you ever worked with, that you ever managed? Obviously, the, the, well, say the best player I ever coached was David Cooper at Rangers. David was tremendous. Yeah, I mean, what a talent. And the left foot, my goodness. I think the ball was stuck to his left foot. But the best player ever signed in 22 years of management was Kevin McAllister. Yeah, He's right. a winger. And I always had wingers all the time. You know, you can't beat it taking men on, scoring goals and providing with the strikers. But I signed Kevin twice for Falkirk from Camlin Juniors when he was about 19. Really? And when I went back the second time as manager, I signed him from Hibs and he was a tremendous player for me. The best player ever signed without a doubt. I say he was a special player. And if he's, well, he was playing the Millennium, of course, and, and uh, that was the night when I got a lifetime achievement award for the fans as well, which I'm obviously very proud of. But a wee crunchy was, was great. I mean, every time he comes, he's always made very welcome at Falkirk without a doubt. And uh, what about Falkirk this season? Uh, you're, the, you're the business manager there, um, Alex. And, and Falkirk, obviously, in League One, there was a lot of rumours um, in January that there was a chance that Falkirk could go part-time because of the situation had you dropped down from the Championship. Well, that's not happened. You've got a new owner in at the moment, I understand. Or has that not happened? It's not happened, no. no. Why, what, what happened? It's the end of this month, obviously. Uh, they're, they're, they're the lawyers and... His lawyers, you know, doing due diligence, you know, so we'll find out what's happening. But at the moment, the boys are full time and they know ex exactly what is required. Talking to them, they know they've got to win the league, got to get back up again and win them. So far, they've been very impressive. They've done really well. We're sitting top of the league, so hopefully, come the end of the season, we're going to be still there and get back up to the championship again. If, and, if, uh, if truth be uh, the 4,000. The previous game at home as well, we've done batting 4,000, which is fantastic. It really is. And it's a big club, Falkirk, and it's a super club. It's a great club. so Hopefully we'll get back where we belong. There was um, a, a lot said last season when you basically threw all your eggs into one basket to get promotion into the Premiership and it kind of went all pear-shaped. Um, mistakes were made last year. I, I take it those mistakes will not be made again, Alex, and it's it's about getting promotion, getting the team back into the, the Championship and then kick on from there. Well, that's it. Uh, kind of knows what's required. He, knows, he said that himself, really, and he signed a lot of experienced players. Uh, good players have been over the course before and so far they've been very impressive the games they've played and I think they're going to get better the more they play together they have a better understanding and I just feel that uh, they'll, they'll win the league they've got to win the league it's simple they've got to get back to the championship again and, and make their way up to the, the premiership you'll uh, scoosh it I think, I think you'll, you'll scoosh the league but just from a fan's perspective and for the fans of Falkirk, uh, from a financial situation, the club are in, 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 in a good position right now and no worries going forward in that sense? None at all. No, we're in a good position financially. I mean, obviously, we, had, we sold the uh, World Volks to Rotherham. And of course, he went to Cardiff and we got a great sell on from that, you know, so right. uh, a few thousand pounds, which is tremendous. So, uh, great from that point of view. So, at the moment, uh, everything, everything is great with the club. So, um, hopefully it'll, it'll continue uh, yeah. Before we let you go Alec um, You've got a big event coming up It's a steak pie and speakers now On the 25th of October uh, You've got some brilliant speakers by the way Crawford Bapti, Kevin McAllister Who you've been ranting and raving about And uh, Sam McGovern as well oh, Good I like, night I like a wee steak pie yeah, That that's be the third one The first one was Big, uh, uh, big Leishman Pony Coyle and the last one there was uh, Murdo McLeod, myself oh, I love Murdo And Wally Henderson But is this one You see, you mentioned it and the uh, Bill Lake is speaking, and if the legends are coming, me McAllister and like say Big Crawford and Sam McGivern. So it's only thirty six pound, including VAT for a free course meal. So, so and as it's steak pie that you get, popular, it'll probably be sold out. Would think. As it as it steak pie that you get, aye. Steak pie. It's what's what's, steak what's pie. the starters? <laughs> <laughs> what's the starters, what's the starters Alec? Alec? Do you know the starters yet? Is it him? It's <laughs> uh, it's always. Soup. Soup, right, okay, and then what is it? What is it, toffee soup? Right, in. oh, that'll do me. £36, £36, pound, right, I'm putting my name down. Putting my name down, Alec, I'll be there. Good. Right, um, brilliant. I, Alec Ton, it's been an absolute pleasure having a wee chat with you this afternoon. Uh, you have a, a, a brilliant night on the 25th and a fantastic season and put my mortgage on Falkirk to win the, the league title. Okay, thanks very much. Oh, Ali, one more question. Thank you very much. One more question just before you go. Seeing the steak pie, did they put links in the steak pie? We sausages. <laughs> I quite like that. Oh, you'll, you'll love it. Right, okay. <laughs> if, they put, if they put a wee link in with the sausage pie, I'm 100% there, all right, Alec? The gravy, the gravy is lovely. Oh, I love gravy. <laughs> love it. Right, cheers, uh, Alex. Thanks very much for coming on. Okay, cheers, bud. Tati bye, bye, bye now. Bye, Tati bye. bye.
It's the Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado. It's now time for our Beer 52 Match of the Week. But before we reveal our Match of the Week, congratulations to Alan McDougall, who last week correctly guessed the result in the Kilmarnock v Hamilton game to win two cases of beer. Round of applause for Which, Alan! Right, so he guessed nothing each? Or nothing each, we're okay, 90 minutes, nothing each. So well done, done to it. Alan. You've got yourself a couple of cases of beer with Beer 52. Now, to win this week, all you have to do is guess the correct score in this Sunday's match between Celtic and Hearts. What's your prediction? Two no hearts. <laughs> uh, if only. You really think that? Is, is Celtic playing him? Aye. Six no Celtic. <laughs> Uh, everyone gets if everyone gets the right score, uh, they'll go into the draw to win the beer. Uh, just by enter by commenting on our link on the Football Daft Facebook page, or you can tweet us at Football Daft with the hashtag Free Beer, where you will find all the details. Uh, winners must be over eighteen and stay in the United Kingdom. And you think that Celtic at home will win? I think it wins six now. No, seriously. What well, do you okay, think? right. Fuck off then. Let me. Um, what do you think? Right, let me get you. Right, right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Shush, shush. So I'm going to say it's a sticky first half. When I think Celtic are going to go, going to get a, sco- a goal in the striker half time. Hibs are going to come out firing all cylinders, and I think they're going to score in the 77 minutes, making it Celtic one each. And then I think Celtic Hearts. will score again in the 83rd, and then one more time on the 89th, leaving to three one. Is that right? That's what you say. 3 1, three one Celtic. Right. Against Hearts. Yeah. You did say Hibs, but you'd never know. notice. That's you meant. Um, now you can get your free beer from Beer52 too. Uh, all you need to do is go to uh, beer52.com forward slash daft, and we can sort out eight beers if you just cover the postage, which is four ninety five. That's a great deal. Uh, Just come to the postage and we'll send you a case of beer. It's about um, and as an added bonus for Football Daft listeners, sign up within the next two weeks and get two extra free beers. So that's a total of 10 free beers from around the world in a nice case sent to your house. And we'll just cover the postage, which is $4.95. Uh, your first box will be sent to you the next day and will contain beer from all over Europe. It's a monthly subscription service for beer. And Beer 52 don't hold you to ransom. You can leave them at any point you like. So just go down to beer52.com forward slash daft to get your first case of eight beers for free. And don't forget, sign up in the next two weeks and get an extra two unmissable beers free. That's beer52.com forward slash uh, <laughs> daft. <laughs> yes. It's the Football Daft Podcast, sponsored by Glasgow Private Hire. We're absolutely delighted to have on FaceTime uh, live from Edinburgh because he's there for the Edinburgh Festival. Um, he's a bit of a dick, but we love him. It's uh, it's Alec Williamson. Hello there, Alec. Well, hello there. How are you boys? You doing well now? Uh, am I a dick based on my personality or what I'm wearing? No, 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 no. Your personality. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alec, for anyone out there who doesn't know who you are and you're sat there in a Celtic strip just then, we'll get to that in just a second. For those who don't know who you are or why you're so famous and why you're at the Edinburgh Festival, just give us a synopsis of who you are and what you do. Uh, I'm a YouTuber slash Instagrammer. I made a name for myself. Um Chasing kangaroos in my backyard back in Australia, um, saying cunt um, <laughs> unnecessarily often and things like that. And uh, that seemed to blow up and go viral online and cunt seemed to dig it. Oh, <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, I'm with you. That is one of my favourite words. It's it's an term of endearment. I, I noticed that a lot of Aussies use it as well. But it, but watch when you go to America, by God, the amount of times I've said it out there and people go, yeesh. You yeah, know what I mean? nah, Especially nah. in front of women. That's what bonds us a bit, the Scots and the Aussies. So we do use it as a term of endearment. You, you stand at the bar and go, hey, I couldn't get a lighter. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah. well, uh, well, uh, did he just say can't? You know, that's you. I mean, you really are. Or even worse if you say, is any cunt got a fag? That's even <laughs> more worse. <laughs> 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 Uh, Alec, um, I was brought, uh, you were brought to my attention um, with your commentaries of sporting events, and they are hilarious. How long have you been doing the commentary for the sporting events? Uh, Since the World Cup, um, I think it was the one in fucking Brazil or something. (laughs) Um, See, when a World Cup comes around, I'm really into it, but Australia, much like Scotland, we tend to fucking struggle. (laughs) So um, I have to make my own fun. And, um, you know, doing my own commentaries over some of the best goals and, 
you know, a bit of my historical and geographical knowledge include that. Um, uh, one of my favourite calls was when one of the Ivory Coast boys got a goal, um, saying that they've been hunting that, they've needed a goal more than they needed clean water and food. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're sat there with a Celtic jersey on. Are you wearing that to annoy Gredo, who's a Rangers <laughs> fan, or are you a Celtic fan? Yeah, well, this is something I wanted to discuss. The thing that fascinates me a lot about Scottish football is just the fucking deep resent and hatred you all have against each other. That blows my fucking mind. It took me a long time to choose a fucking team, you know, because I'd say, like, oh, I go for Hibs, and then I'd meet a big, scary fucking cunt at the pub who goes for hearts. So, (laughs) magically, magically, (laughs) I'd change and start start going for hearts. You know, Jumbo. Uh, <laughs> so why Celtic over Rangers then? Um, good point, man. Um, there's a famous Bill Hicks photo, a photo of one of my favourite comedians from back in the nineties. I love who Bill has, Hicks. Yep, photo of him out the front of a of a Celtics game. Really? Um, I do have a soft spot for Stevie Gerrard as well. I'm a big fan of him too, so I love what he's doing I with don't, the team. I, but um, sorry, I had um, I had Scott Brown come to me fucking gig the other night. Brilliant. So the, yeah, the Celtic captain, and I I don't know enough about Scottish football. I didn't know cunts are walking out of me gig, and they're more excited about him fucking being there than me doing the fucking show. <laughs> and so I was running in there, and and I said, "Who is he? What does he look like?" And then they said, "He's just a bald, fucking scary looking cunt." I said, "That doesn't that doesn't fucking narrow it down, boys." <laughs> <laughs> so. You chose Celtic because one of your heroes, Bill Hicks, is also a Celtic fan. So that's no, what... no, no. Hold on a minute. That's Bill what he H- said. Bill Hicks wasn't a Celtic fan, was he? Well, he was at the game and he was having a, had a fucking Celtic scarf Shut on up, in the photo. This. <laughs> really, <laughs> Bill, Bill Hicks is seriously one of my uh, icons. There you go. You I'm might not... have to change teams, mate. <laughs> 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 I'm t- so will I type in Bill Hicks Google and it fucking Bill Hicks Celtic? I've never seen this. I have mean, a look. So, oh, oh. so while you're looking, let me ask you then, Alex, you're saying that Scott Brown is Scotland, uh, former Scotland captain and current Celtic captain, was at your show the other night. Did you only know he was at your show afterwards? No way, man! So he is! He's a park eight. So he is! Yes. Fucking there you hell! Go. There you go. Yeah. Hey, hold on, wait to see if there's anyone when one of them outside Ibrox, wait to see. <laughs> 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 so did you know before or after that Scott Brown was in uh, the gig? No, nah, only after, man, because people were getting photos that? with me, but they were more starstruck that he was running around in there. Then I tried to find him, and um, I couldn't find him. He'd, he'd done it. He darted off all sneakily. So um, I messaged him on Instagram, said if he wanted to hit the fucking nose beers, but um, <laughs> said he had said he had training in the morning. So uh, true professional, respect that. Are you doing any other fringe shows as part of people's guests? Are you, are you on any other shows that people might be aware of, or, or is it just your own? Just the worthwhile ones like this one, boys. <laughs> yeah. well, well, go for it, big well man. Done. I'm trying to get along to Fringe. Are you still doing it until the end? No, I know it's getting quite uh, There's a few tickets left. I've, I've opened up another um, another show at midnight on the um, Saturday just because it's the bank holiday. Right. So those, c- those cunts in England can come up and fucking uh, <laughs> run a right in your town and hopefully come and see my gig as well. So how long are you at the uh, Edinburgh Festival for? Are you there until the very end? Uh, yeah, here till the very end, mate. Um, and it's a shame because Scotty Brown actually w- he invited me down to Celtic Park to oh, come and watch a fucking game. But that'd be brilliant, I, mate. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'll get time to make it down to Glasgow. I've never been, but I hear it's fucking pretty wild. So how long are you here for, Alex? Till next Monday. Oh, right, right, so you're right, away on Monday. Right, right, oh, that's right. a nightmare. That is a ticket. There's no time at all that you can fit in going to Lennox Town to talk. Is I mean that is a good. I mean, as a Celtic fan. That would be brilliant to go and see. Sit with the players. Yeah, the training ground. Well, they would treat you really well, man. I'm curious about how it works. See, in Australia, like, I'm pretty blown away by the fact that someone was telling me in Glasgow, you guys have, not just is it different pubs, but sort of different areas where the Rangers fans and the Celtic fans were hanging out. Cool, Yeah. That fucking blows my mind. Mate, if I was you, you'd you'd fit in well with that top in Lark Hall. Aye, go to Lark Hall. (laughs) Go to Lark Hall. I I feel like with my accent, I'd be able to go into any fucking pub. Aye, but with that tap, go, walk walk, walk down Lark Hall, turn centre with that on there, bother. You'll be brand new, mate. You'll you'll sell loads of tickets for your show. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm just looking at the stats here, Alex. 1.3 million Facebook followers, over 80 million views on your YouTube videos 
You must be fucking raining it You must be raking it Ah, uh, you must be. Ah, uh, nah, man. The, the, the cash only really comes from the live shows, you know. Boys, um, you yeah, boys. Since, since, like, nah, since Facebook has bought out Instagram uh, and the f- YouTube, they... They don't like swear words. They don't like drug or sex references. So that's that. pretty much my whole fucking shtick, mate. <laughs> so they 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 demonotonize all those fucking videos. So um, I'm just one of the scrubbers. So um, Alex, um, you're at the Edinburgh Festival. You're there until Monday. You're sat there in your Celtic top, and I'm I'm taking your um, rented accommodation in the capital city of Scotland. And you've got a wee beer. You have got your vape. You're preparing for your show tonight. Um, you have um been doing advertising cameo videos, which you then send personally to people. Understand? Yeah, it's great. I'm I di- I've just realised I've got a knack for abuse, and <laughs> usually you um you get in trouble for that in the real world, but people seem to pay me to abuse the fuck out of them, so I'm glad to do it. So um, would you do me a wee favour, Alex? And I know I'm kind of like throwing you um um. I'll start. What do you in. want me to do? <laughs> I'm not your fucking jukebox, cunt. <laughs> right, uh, right I, I know. Um, I'm just going to throw this at you, Alex. Could you? Hammer and criticise Grado for me. What? Grado. Well, fucking look at him sitting there with his fucking shit fucking tattoos, mate. What, you can't afford a fucking cover up on that thing, mate? What is that? What is that, a tattoo for a Rangers premiership? I didn't think so, mate. They haven't fucking won one in six years, cunt. (laughs) (laughs) Your face. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry man, no, I feel bad Hey, we won the petrol fuck Couldn't you fucking wanker, (laughs) alright Day one Let's see, I'm a, I'd, I'd be a good Scott if I'm reincarnated. I'll come back as one of you cunts. <laughs> uh, Alec, oh. would you like to have a go at having a pop at me now? Oh, I can't see your fucking rough head. Wait, it, lo- it looks a bit like a ferret and a, and a night cut. <laughs> Yankees are. Right there, you can see me now. Hey, oh, look at you, mate. Oh, wow. Still doing a fucking podcast at 70 years old, mate. Get a real fucking job, you old fucking grey cunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, superb, man. Superb. <laughs> superb. Alec, it's a shame you've only got a few days left in Scotland because I wouldn't mind a wee night out with you and I would love to have taken you to the football as well, but clearly you're not going to have time for that. Uh, when are you next back in Scotland, mate? Uh, I come back, mate. I'm, I'm here every year in August, the whole month of August. Right. So you boys hit me up next year. Yeah, we definitely will. Yeah, fucking oh. So I'll tell you what we'll do, Alex. When you're back here next August, we'll hook up, hook up with you. We'll take you to a couple of games at Hearts, Tyne Castle. We'll take you to a Rangers game and we'll take you to a Celtic game while you're here. And see what I you like the best. I love that. Aye. I love that, boys. Right, Give that's what we'll do. If we're still in business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Alex currently has a show at the Edinburgh Festival. It's called Sin on My Face. Let me just get that right. Sin on my face, uh, which is at the Just a Tonic at La Belle uh, until the 25th and has just added a midnight show on Saturday because of the demand. People want to see this man. Uh, Alex Williamson sat there in his Celtic jersey and he's rented accommodation with a Probably. vape, with a bottle of beer. You've been an absolute star, my man. Uh, have a great <laughs> Edinburgh <laughs> Festival. Swig a beer boys. for the working Fuck man. Yeah, get it up, yeah. <laughs> 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 Cheers, Alex. See you later, Alec, man. Thank you. <laughs> And that's it for the Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado, sponsored by Glasgow Private Hire. Our thanks to Mr. Aussie Alex Williamson for joining us from the Edinburgh Festival, Alex Totten from his car on FaceTime, and also to Mark Dallas from ICW, now the Vice President of Maryhill FC, and for bringing me some amazing strips. I am telling you, I'm going to the episode, and I must admit, or should I say, I should apologise for again being one hour late. However, in that time being late, as I stuck at traffic lights, there was an overturned lorry. I've managed to make a couple of contacts for the future, for future podcast You're going to name names? No, I don't. No, I'm not going to name names, no, but don't. Really, they're really, really good. Are they better than what I organised with Mark Callan and Alan McLaren? Well, they're up there. <laughs> <laughs> they're up there. Uh, um, Tam Cowan's in next week. Aye, better than that. Better than Tam Cowan? Tam's brilliant, but I mean, I'm talking to... Better him. than Tam? Hey, I'm talking to the fucking big dogs here, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to Spaniards. I'm talking to Dutch. I'm, no, he's not Dutch. He's Danish. I'm talking to... <laughs> Who else is he? Was he for? He's, he's Dutch. Where's Philip Sebo for again? <laughs>
Ma si dice, 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 ma si d